Hello everyone, my name is Anushka Saxena and in this video we shall be reading chapter 5 of science, periodic classification of elements. In class 9th we have learned that matter around us is present in the form of elements, compounds and mixtures and the elements contain atoms of only one type. Do you know how many elements are known till date? At present, 118 elements are known to us. All these have different properties. Out of these 118, only 94 are naturally occurring. As different elements were being discovered, scientists gather more and more information about the properties of these elements. They found it difficult to organize all that was known about the elements. They started looking for some pattern in their properties, on the basis of which they could study a large number of elements with ease. Making order out of chaos, early attempts at the classification of elements. We have been learning how various things or living beings can be classified on the basis of their properties. Even in other situations, we come across instances of organization based on some properties. For example, in a shop, soaps are kept together at one place while biscuits are kept together elsewhere. Even among soaps, bathing, bathing soaps are stacked separately from washing soaps. Similarly, scientists made several attempts to classify elements according to their properties and obtain an orderly arrangement out of chaos. The earliest attempt to classify the elements resulted in grouping the then known elements as metals and non-metals. Later further classifications were tried out as our knowledge of elements and their properties increased. Doberaner's Triads In the year 1817, John Wolfgang Doberaner, a German chemist, tried to arrange the elements with similar properties into groups. He identified some groups having three elements each, so he called these groups triads. Doberaner showed that when the three elements in a triad were written in the order of increasing atomic masses, the atomic mass of the middle element was roughly the average of the atomic masses of the other two elements. For example, take the triad consisting of lithium, sodium and potassium with the respective atomic masses 6.9, 23 and 39. What is the average of, of the atomic masses of lithium and potassium? How does this compare? with the atomic mass of sodium given below are some some groups of three elements these elements are arranged downwards in order of increasing atomic masses can you find out which of these groups form doberaner's triads you will find that groups b and c form doberaner triads Doberaner could identify only three triads from the elements known at that time. Hence, this system of classification into triads was not found to be useful. Newland's Law of Octaves The attempts of Doberaner's encouraged other chemists to correlate the properties of elements with their atomic masses. In 1866, John Newlands, an English chemist, arranged the then known elements in the order of increasing atomic masses. He started with the element having the lowest atomic mass, hydrogen, and ended at thorium, which was the 56th element. He found that every eighth element had properties similar to that of the first. He compared this to the octaves found in music. Therefore, he called it the law of octaves. It is known as Newland's law of octaves. In Newland's octaves, the properties of lithium and sodium were found to be same. 
sodium is the eighth element after lithium. Similarly, beryllium and magnesium resemble each other. A part of the original form of Newlands octaves is given in table 5.3. It was found that the law of octaves was applicable only up to calcium as after calcium every eighth element did not possess properties similar to that of the first. It was assumed by Newlands that only 56 elements existed in nature and no more elements would be discovered in the future. But later on several new elements were discovered whose properties does not, did not fit into the law of octaves. In order to fit elements into his table, Newlands adjusted two elements in the same slot, but also put some unlike elements under the same note. Can you find examples from these from table 5.3? Note that cobalt and nickel are in the same slot and these are placed in the same column as fluorine, chlorine and bromine which have very different properties than these elements. Iron which resembles cobalt and nickel in properties has been placed far away from these elements. With the discovery of noble gases, the law of octaves became irrelevant. Thus, Newland's law of octaves worked well with lighter elements only. Making order out of chaos, Mendeleev's periodic table. Even after the rejection of Newland's law of octaves, many scientists continued to search for a pattern that correlated the properties of elements with their atomic masses. The main credit for classifying elements goes to Mitri Ivanovich Mendeleev, a Russian chemist. He was the most important contributor to the early development of a periodic table of elements wherein the elements were arranged on the basis of their fundamental property, the atomic mass, and also on the similarity of chemical properties. When Mendeleev started his work, 63 elements were known. He examined the relationship between the atomic masses of the elements and their physical and chemical properties. Among chemical properties, Mendeleev concentrated on the compounds formed by elements which, with oxygen and hydrogen. He selected hydrogen and oxygen as they are very reactive and form compounds with most elements. The formulae of the hydrides and oxides formed by an element were treated as one of the basic properties of an element for its classification. He then took 63 cards and on each card he wrote down the properties of one element. He sorted out the elements with similar properties and pinned the cards together on a wall. He observed that most of the elements got a place in a periodic table and were arranged in the order of their increasing atomic masses. It was, obse it was also observed that there occurs a periodic recurrence of elements with similar physical and chemical properties. On this basis, Mendeleev formulated a periodic law which states that the properties of elements are the periodic function of their atomic masses. Mendeleev's periodic table contains vertical columns called groups and horizontal rows called periods. Achievements of Mendeleev's periodic table while developing the periodic table, there were a few instances where Mendeleev had to place an element with a slightly greater, greater atomic mass before an element with a slightly lower atomic mass. The sequence was inverted so that elements with similar properties could be grouped together. For example, cobalt atomic mass 58.9 appeared before nickel atomic mass 
Looking at table 5.4, can you find out one more such anomaly? Further, Mendeleev left some gaps in his periodic table. Instead of looking upon these gaps as defects, Mendeleev boldly predicted the existence of some elements that had not been discovered at that time. Mendeleev named them by prefixing a Sanskrit numeral, Eka, 1, to the name of preceding element in the same group. For instance, Scandium, Gallium and Germanium, discovered later, have properties similar to Eka Boron, Eka Aluminium and Eka Silicon respectively. The properties of Eka Aluminium predicted by Mendeleev and those of the element Gallium which was discovered later and re replaced Eka Aluminium are listed as follows. This provided convincing evidence for both the correctness and usefulness of Mendeleev's periodic table. Further, it was the extraordinary success of Mendeleev's prediction that led chemists not only to accept his periodic table but also recognize him as the originator of the concept on which it is based. Noble gases like helium, neon and argon have been mentioned in many a context before this. These gases were discovered very late because they are very inert and present in extremely low concentrations in our atmosphere. One of the strengths of Mendeleev's periodic table was that when the gases when these gases were discovered they could be placed in a new group without disturbing the existing order. Limitations of Mendeleev's classification. Electronic configuration of hydrogen resembles that of alkali metals. Like alkali metals, hydrogen combines with halogens, oxygen and sulfur to form compounds having similar formulae as shown in, exam as shown in the examples here. On the other hand, just like halogens, hydrogen also exists as diatomic molecules and it combines with metals and nonmetals to form covalent compounds. Certainly, no fixed position can be given to hydrogen in the periodic table. This was the first limitation of Mendeleev's periodic table. He could not assign a correct position to hydrogen in his table. Isotopes were discovered long after Mendeleev had proposed his periodic classification of elements. Let us recall that isotopes of an element have similar chemical properties but different atomic masses. Thus, isotopes of all elements pose a challenge to Mendeleev's periodic law. Another problem was that the atomic masses do not increase in a regular manner in going from one element to the next. So, it was not possible to predict how many elements could be discovered between two elements, especially when we consider the heavier elements. Making order out of chaos, the modern periodic table in 1913, Henry Moseley showed that the atomic number symbolized as Z of an element is a more fundamental property than its atomic mass. Accordingly, Mendeleev's periodic law was modified and atomic number was adopted as the basis of modern periodic table and the modern periodic law can be stated as follows. Properties of elements are a periodic function of their atomic number. Let us recall that the atomic number gives us the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom and this number increases by 1 in going from one element to the next. Elements when arranged in order of increasing atomic number led us to the classification known as the modern periodic table. 
prediction of properties of elements could be made with more precision when elements were arranged on the basis of increasing atomic number. We shall be continuing from this page in the next part. Thank you so much for watching.